Hello and welcome to my birthday. Uh, it is my birthday today, so I didn't really want to prep a show. Didn't know if I was going to do a show, but Tuesdays we do Koi Cubed here on the internet, so I thought I had to do a show, and here we are. Uh, it's going to be a lot more freewheeling than normal. It's going to be a lot less organized, so if you've never seen any of my content, it's not usually this uh, scattered or in disarray. So I just wanted to connect with you guys. We're in quarantine. It's hard to really celebrate any sort of birthday, so I thought if I could spend some of the time with you, then uh, that, that at least I'm, I'm with people having my own party. And what is a party without at least some drink? So uh, we're gonna be doing a drinking Q&A. Uh, not like a drinking game, like I'm not gonna drink more when we Q&A, but it's a B and Q and A, so we're gonna have, uh, you know, a Q&A. So there's a lot of news. Of course there's a lot of news this week. Probably the most news uh, outside of Fandom Week that we've had in the last couple months, but that is of course how it goes. Um, but here we are. Uh, let's cover some of it while we hang out and drink. Um, I'm personally having a Mississippi Mud, which is one of my favorite beers from Trader Joe's. It is actually a really quality beer considering it is a uh, grocery store brand. Uh, it's a black and tan, which is my exact shit. If you've ever been to Ireland or Britain, uh, black and tans are a lot more common over there. You can get them here, but they're not as common. It is a lovely mix of Porter and Pilsner and it is delicious. Oh, and it comes in a jug. Um, I already went for my run today, so I've earned this beer, and I'm going to earn the whiskey I have next. So, highly recommend the Mississippi Mud. It's smooth. It's got a great, great oaky, very mm, stout, but not as heavy as a stout. It's like, it's like a stout that doesn't weigh you down. Ah. And uh, I bring up beer because we are bringing back comic books and craft beer with Saga. Uh, we're going to be doing Saga and Spirits, so either uh, Hard Alcohol, if we do Saga and Spirits, or Saga and uh, a couple of Dragon Beers. Um, the fine folks at New Holland are sending us some uh, Dragon's Milk, and also I'm going to be picking up um, some, oh, I forget what it's called, it's got a dragon on it, and it looks bitchin'. So uh, yeah, there'll be all sorts of stuff coming at you. Usually I jump into Streamlabs and Super Chats. Uh, I'll be doing that as well this week, so if you have questions, I will definitely get to the ones in the Streamlabs and the Super Chats, but I will also be checking the chat periodically. So uh, thank you all very much for being here on my birthday. It fell on a Tuesday, and it's my birthday, so I get to share it with you guys, so I'm very excited. We got our first Super Chat, uh, Christine uh, Wagenham, who I've seen in the chat many, many times. Thank you, Christine. Uh, my fave B-Day tradition is giving myself a happy meal. Does, uh, defined as any meal that makes you happy. Here's something towards a happy birthday dinner. That is so sweet. Thank you very much. Uh, I know exactly where that's going. I am going to get, um, I, there's a, a mom and pop buffalo chicken place uh, a little ways from me um, called Hot Mother Clucker. And I am a huge fan of Buffalo Chicken, and I am a huge fan of supporting uh, small businesses. So I'm going to get some Hot Mother Clucker with that $10 from Christine. So thank you very much. And Sahil has this to say, happy birthday, Koi. I'll be sure to catch the full stream in my free time. Hell yeah, Sahil. Always appreciate you, man. And it will be here waiting for you after the live. So much, much appreciated as ever uh, to both you guys. So there is Buffalo Chicken coming in Christine's honor, and there is probably a beer coming in uh, Smack Talks of Heels honor. So thank you guys very much. Let's get into some news, because there is a shocking amount going on. We're going to talk Tenet, which I've seen. Uh, I'm going to go spoiler free with my Tenet review. Uh, we're going to talk about the insanity of Kang. We're going to talk about the Young Avengers potential. We're going to talk about Kevin Feige's involvement in Spider-Woman with Olivia Wilde. We're going to talk about the quote that shook the DC fandom universe. We're going to talk about aliens. Yeah, we're going to talk about aliens. Uh, I also got a Lazy Susan for Wade so he can join us in any direct... There he goes. Law, there he is. Now he's part of the party. That's right. Birthday. All right, gang. Let's get into it. First up in the news... We got Kang. We officially have Kang the Conqueror in the Marvel Universe, which is absolutely insane. Uh, for a very long time, I've been talking about how Kang needs to be the next of the big bads in the Marvel Universe. And then as recently as three weeks ago, Peyton Reed, the director of Ant-Man, came out and said that this Ant-Man, the third Ant-Man, is going to be much more involved in the universe. The um, MCU is going to have a lot more Ant-Man 
bolstering it and keeping it going, which I, I honestly think that that makes sense. Uh, you've got Scott Lang, who's very important. You've got Paul Rudd, who's an essential part of it. And now he's kind of one of the old guard. He was the new guy in phase two. And now after all the events of Endgame and everything else, he's a lot bigger of a part of the Avengers and he's got a daughter and his daughter is Cassie Lang and she's gotten so big in game, clever hype pun, stature, young Avengers, young Avengers are coming. And I've been saying it for about two years now, check the work, check my homework. I've been saying it in the margins. Um, I think we're going to get a young Avengers Disney plus show. And I think it's going to come out of this Ant-Man three situation with Kang. I think we're going to get Iron Lad very soon. I think we're going to get Kate Bishop and Hawkeye, which is another young Avenger. I think the importance of Hulkling in the comics right now with empire cannot be overstated. And I think most of all Kang being cast as Jason, I mean, sorry, Jonathan majors is a huge thing. Jonathan majors is a fantastic actor. He graduated from the Yale school of drama. He is a, a Titan thespian. Also, September baby. Jonathan Majors is younger than me. He's 31 as of uh, September 7th. Man, Jonathan Majors put in the work one year younger than me. Being Kang, how do you feel old without being older than Kang? A time conqueror. I feel so old, I'm older than time. Uh, but Jonathan Majors uh, was fantastic in The Last Black Man from San Francisco, in San Francisco. I have not yet seen Lovecraft Country. Everyone tells me how good it is, but the work of his I have seen is absolutely incredible. Big, big, big fan of freaking Kang entering this universe. So to me, that means Ant-Man 3 is going to be more tied into the universe, which again, I think makes sense. Um, your tier two Avengers are going to be a lot bigger of a deal. Your Doctor Strange, that multiverse of madness is going to kickstart a lot of what's going on with the next phase of the MCU. And you've got the young Avengers springing out of the, the, the Kang glory right here. So Ant-Man 3, I think went from being like, I'll catch it to, oh, this is an integral part of the universe a la a Captain America or any of the other movies that, that come to play. So this is a giant deal. Now, if you guys don't know who Kang the Conqueror is, he is a, a man who controls time. He has taken out the Avengers many, many times. He is an Ultron level threat. I would imagine he's not just a one-off. I don't think they're gonna Age of Ultron him. I think they're gonna Thanos him. I think he's gonna be in multiple movies. Um, I think he's gonna be tying into many, many, many things. Um, we've heard rumors, I don't know if it's been confirmed, but America Chavez is gonna be in uh, Doctor Strange 2. So between Kate Bishop on Hawkeye, um, America Chavez on Doctor Strange, and then now this confirmation of Kang, which I assume means uh, Cassie Lang is gonna come to play. I could see Young Avengers happening as soon as like this phase of Disney Plus shows is over. After Loki, after Winter Soldier Falcon, after WandaVision, I could see Young Avengers being the next, like the phase two of the, uh, the TV shows. So everyone in the chat that is freaking out over the glory that is um, his show, I totally agree. Uh, I've heard only good things from people I trust. I will be watching Lovecraft Country and I really enjoyed him in The Last Black Man in San Francisco. So I'm really excited for Jonathan Majors. Let me jump over to the chat and see what you guys are saying. Let me refresh the streamlabs. I saw some, some, some zombies pop up on my screen but did not know what they were doing. Uh, all right, let's see here. We've got Oh, Ian Roth. Ian, uh, welcome to the 32 Club. I, you know, I appreciate it. He sent me 32 bucks from 32 Club. Much, much appreciated. That's very sweet. Uh, welcome to the 32 Club. Get some good Michigan beer. Ideally dark and barrel related. I recommend New Holland's Dragon Milk, a favorite of Jason Momoa. Thanks for being you. Dude, I appreciate the hell out of that, man. It's hard to be, uh, it's, hard, it's hard to be you. It's hard to be anyone in these times with the world imploding and literally on fire and everything going on. So uh, I, everyone reaching out and being so kind to my birthday has been so sweet. And um, people saying that I, I help them see the world a little brighter is really inspiring for me to keep trying to be optimistic and keep pushing forward. So I really appreciate each and every one of you. So I will keep being me and I appreciate it very, very much. Um, thank you, man. And I will be trying that Dragon's Milk ASAP within the week. And I will be letting you know how that goes. Dragon's Milk is coming. Thank you, Ian Roth. Uh, Ricky Perez Jr. says, Koi, happy birthday, man. I wish I had a fraction of your energy and positivity. Again, the uh, energy and positivity comes from you guys. Uh, the positivity comes from the fact that I'm terrified of dying, and I know that this day on the planet is one less day that I've got because we're all going that way. There's no stopping it. There's nothing else we got. Um, there's literally no plan B. We all die. So uh, I'm going to appreciate all the days I do get, and, uh, you know, I'm 32 today, which would have been a life sentence uh, 100 years ago. You know, the 100, like... 100 years ago, we made it to like fucking 40. People were married at like teenhood. 
Um, so 32 is a life expectancy, a generation, eh, like three generations ago. Um, our great grandparents, well, my great grandparents are, are still kicking. Recently, 32 was, was near the end. So I'm very appreciative. Uh, I try to take care of myself. So I get as many birthdays as I can, but I, I stay positive because I am appreciative for another day. So thank you. And the energy comes from, um, zeal. I just manufacture zeal. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, next up, we got Catherine, S Catherine Smith. Catherine Smith just sent a fantastic super chat with no context, but appreciated. Catherine Smith, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the birthday present. Holy crap. Uh, I have nothing to read except for a thank you from me to Catherine Smith. Thank you, Catherine Smith. Um, I, I think all of the super chat money today, uh, anything I get in Streamlabs or super chat usually goes to rent or to um, eating or any of those things, and uh, anything from comic books and craft beer goes to beer, unless you specify beer in here, and then I buy the beer you specify, but usually I use any of my donations on uh, living and staying alive, but I think uh, being that it's my birthday and I'm in here, anything from today is gonna go to stuff I want. Um, anything in here is gonna go to like, I've been saving up for a new, uh, like a um, elliptical bike like Roxy has, like, an in, like a stationary bike, that's the plan there. Um, anything like that is gonna be coming from this. So these are all birthday gifts from you guys and they'll be spent on birthday gifts. So I very much appreciate it. I wanna get Tony Hawk uh, one and two on PS4. I wanna get, uh, there's a couple movies I need like Mission Impossible Fallout. I don't own Thor Ragnarok. I just like, I don't, I forgot. Like how did I, I, I don't own Thor Ragnarok. I need to pick up Thor Ragnarok, Doctor Strange, Mission Impossible Fallout, Tony Hawk. Uh, like there's things it needs. So thank you all very, very much. I'll be using this for that. So much, much appreciated. Thank you, Catherine Smith. Uh, Jesus Castellum, the gentleman who lost his comic store for a time and got it back. I appreciate you on Twitter very much, sir. And I, I enjoy your comic book journey. Um, here's to many more years, man. Cheers. Did you see what I pulled out of the mystery box? Oh, that's so funny. I literally just mentioned that before I read your thing. Uh, sent you a tweet. Wasn't expecting that. 9.8 Uncanny X-Men 206. Happy birthday, man. Enjoy your day. Hey, Zeus, I did see that. Uh, I appreciate your Twitter very much. Uh, on my tweets, I, I get, uh, overwhelmed, but I saw it and it's fantastic. Congratulations. 9.8, son. Hell yeah. Um, dude, that's a hell of a mystery box. Good, good work. Good luck. You've had good luck, and thank you. Thank you, Jesus, and enjoy your comic journey. Always send me stuff. Even if I don't respond, I try to see everything, and I try to respond, but yes, especially when it involves comics. Congratulations, Jesus. Uh, Maddie Gunner. Maddie Gunner, happy birthday, dude. This is for a drink on me. Keep being you and spreading positivity. You're the man. Much love. To this, this, this next sip is for Maddie Gunner. I appreciate you. That is going to go to the next beer run in your honor. Much, much obliged. And Muckbang Reviews. Muckbang Reviews says, we love you, Koi. Happy birthday. Thank you, Muckbang Reviews. Uh, I always appreciate your support, and I always uh, appreciate you in the chat. Also, I just got to say before I get back in the news, this chat is one of the only corners of the internet, as positive as it is. Um, I love the positivity of the Koi Pond. I love that I, it's my birthday, and all I wanted was to take a week off, and I instinctively was like, no, no, I got to spend it with my people. I got to spend it with the Koi Pond. So even though I wanted to take the week off, this isn't, breaking that. This feels like connecting with you guys because I really care about you guys. So I appreciate you guys not minding this impromptu, barely assembled new show. Um, I, I pulled some comics, I pulled some quotes, and I dove in. So I really appreciate uh, the fact that I get to dive in with you guys. And this didn't feel like work today because I could trust you guys to uh, understand that I just want to hang and get drinking. Uh, so thank you for being one of the most positive corners of the internet. Thank you for being the Koi Pond. Thank you for trying to... Um, spread the the message i try to spread which is just fucking keep living well that's what mcconaughey tries to spread he says just keep living i stay i say be zealous and uh work out and and watch movies and read comics which is not as concise as just keep living much love guys all right let's get to the next bit of news so kang if you haven't read check out young avengers there's an incredible run from alan heinberg uh the art from jim chung is is gorgeous um kang's been around since the 60s uh, he's a classic OG villain. He's got a lot of stuff, uh, like as far as length of time, and he's defeated the Avengers a number of times because, frankly, he can take care of time. Like when you control time, what are you gonna do? Like that's how it's done. So uh, yeah, Kang the Conqueror is gonna be a fascinating character. I don't think he's a one-off, and I don't think they're gonna. I've seen some people saying they're gonna Mandarin him. They're not gonna do that twice. I love. I personally am a big fan of the Mandarin twist. 
Um, we're getting the real Mandarin in Shang-Chi, but I don't think they'll do that twice because it wouldn't be as big as a surprise because it's like we've seen that twist before, so it's not as exciting. So personally, this is, to me, I think going to be Kang the Conqueror. I think it's going to be multiple movies. I think Jonathan Majors is a fantastic choice, and I think it's about to shake the entire universe, so I'm very, very excited. Okay, uh, people are approving of Deadpool having had as well. I appreciate you guys noticing. It's pretty obvious, but, you know, it's, it's a detail. Uh, let's see. Um, Brian, uh, Brian, I love your love-hate relationship with Molly at a certain point of view. She always spites me, that Molly Damon. She's coming from my mercs, and I pay attention. And Molly's great. Uh, let's see. Uh, from Russia with Love, I appreciate you, man. An international birthday wish. Much, much obliged. I will be talking about the Black Widow update, which just happened today. Uh, spaghetti, cheesecake, and a martini or two, E. Walter 23. That is their birthday delight. I'm going... Um, Cameron's Kick, which is my favorite alcoholic mixed drink, um, buffalo chicken and fries, and I rented, uh, well, I didn't, friends did, friends of mine rented a theater for me to go see Tenant, so I'm, gonna, I'm watching Tenant in a theater, and I'm eating buffalo chicken, and I'm having my own uh, little small gathering of six friends, and all six of my friends uh, COVID tested within the last three days for me, and then self-quarantined, so my friends literally got COVID tested and stayed home for three days to come hang out, and they all sent me their COVID, um, so I'm having like a tiny gathering with people that are safe, which is so rad, so that's, that's, my, that's my gathering uh, today. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Matthew Richards. Sorry, Coy. Misclicked RFL. Still can't pick from the Strongbow or Dead Guy Ale. Both are great. Um, Michael says something seems to be wrong with Streamlabs. No! Uh, a few other people have gotten it to work. I don't know what might be wrong, but I appreciate the heads up, Michael McCarcel, who is a, a friend of the Streamlabs, uh, who has been so, so rad, and also uh, we team up on Patreon a lot. Uh, I just got the Streamlabs to work. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe when I refreshed it, that fixed it. I hope that did the trick. Um, again, chaos show. Anyone watching this, usually I am up on the news and running a tight ship adjacent. Uh, Yellow Flash, what did you think of Dune being split into two films? Do you think they'll be able to make a second Dune if the first one doesn't do commercially well? I think it needed to be split into two films. I think it's a lot. Um, I think it's a thick film with three C's. Um, and that's going to need a second, uh, sorry, thick book with three C's and you're going to need more. So I do think it'll do well enough. I think they're buffering a certain amount for box office. Blade Runner 2049 didn't do that well, but they still gave Denis, um, you know, the, 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 the Dune rights. So I think we'll get a second one. I do worry about how well it does financially, but I do think it's coming, uh, regardless of box office expectations. Uh, Garth, watching you live, uh, Roxy live at the same time, very confusing. That's a lot of Boston on the airwaves, but it's only one Bostonian's birthday, so thank you for being here and there, because Roxy's fantastic. Uh, let's see, Ian, appreciate my saga shirt. I, uh, I'm actually doing a collection video on my shirt soon, by request of Smack Talk, because I got hella, I got actually four saga shirts and lots of other stuff. Wesley and everyone else, thank you for the love, uh, the general B-Day love is much, much appreciated. Uh, all right, now I'm going to get back to some news and then jump back to Jason Ritchie. Happy birthday. I hope you're still enjoying the Avengers game. My future in-laws bought it for my birthday so we can play together. I just finished the solo campaign and I loved it. I'm 31% of the way into the solo campaign, Mr. Jason Ritchie. Uh, thank you for the Streamlabs as ever, and I am loving it still. 31% in. I'm currently playing as Kamala again. Um, the storyline's brilliant, the graphics are fun, um, the, the gameplay itself is so dope, like playing as all those different Avengers, I love the harm room, um, I, I'm infatuated with this game, I actually feel like I'm all of these different characters, so I am so happy, and it's, it's such a blast, and I'm so glad you're enjoying it too, man, so thank you, Jason Ritchie, much, much appreciated. Um, alright, more news, and then I'll jump back into the chat, uh, and into the Streamlabs. Next up, speaking of what I'm doing for my birthday, Tenet. This is a Tenant spoiler-free review. No spoilers, I promise you. These are just my thoughts uh, without giving anything away. And then uh, I will get, I see the chat asking about Streamlabs. I'll check that in just a moment. Um, Tenant was a very dense, complicated film that made you feel simultaneously intelligent and dumb all at once. The action is second to none. It's Chris Nolan as Nolaniest, uh, especially when it comes to the style of action. It felt like a Dark Knight meets James Bond film. And it also was so complex. And I'm a decently smart person, but it's so complex I really need to see it a second time to really give it my full review. Um, 
So I will be seeing it a second time and then I'll give my spoiler review. But that said, um, it is a fantastic theatrical journey. I don't think I'd recommend it at the drive-in and I, that's what I was saying because the sound design is so important. Um, it's better in a drive-in than at home. I definitely would say between the two, but if you can find a way, uh, Cinemark is doing a full theater rental, the whole theater for $150. So if you get six of your friends together, that's 25 bucks each. And if they all test negative for COVID, you can safely rent a theater and go see it. Uh, you get the theater for up to 20 people, but if you see it with people that haven't tested, that negates the purpose. But if you and like nine friends or two groups of friends, whatever, that are all very safe, we're talking like 15 bucks a ticket, which is about what movie tickets cost anyway for a theater rental. And that's much, much, much safer. So um, Cinemark is doing that. I'm not sure what other theater chains are doing, but right now that is the way uh, that I'm seeing it. Um, the sound design is one of the best parts of the film. The score is incredible, but there's so much dialogue that you need to catch. I'm not sure how that'll translate to the drive-in. Um, the acting is top-notch. I loved everyone in this film. The twists and turns are insane. Uh, Washington, uh, is, is a powerhouse. Like, what a debut. I've never seen him in anything before. He sounds just like his dad, which is very funny because I kept hearing Denzel, even though it wasn't Denzel. Uh, but to, to be in this film and coming out of nowhere, like, he's an incredible actor in this and Robert Pattinson I've been saying for literally years was going to slay as Batman now he's officially Batman and this is a, this is the first movie since the announcement people can see the Bruce Wayne DNA in this film and that's incredible um so I really really enjoyed that uh the woman from Man From U.N.C.L.E. is incredible incredible she carries a lot of the weight of the film a lot of the emotionality of the film is on her shoulders she's a lot of the non-exposition emotion you have to care about her to care about the movie and she really really does great work uh so big fan of i forget her name i'm i like i said i didn't prep this show so i'm a monster uh let me look her up real quick it's debecky i want to say um catherine debecky something debecky um, but she was, she was so, so freaking good. Elizabeth Debicki. Elizabeth Debicki was genius. Uh, Clemens Posey, one of my faves from, um, well, Harry Potter, but also she's an in Bruges. She's got a fantastic bit of the film. And then Kenneth Branagh has to be good because he's so evil, but you have to not have that mustache twirliness to him. And he doesn't. I really appreciated Kenneth Branagh's villain in this film. And then, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson comes in about halfway and is fantastic, man. I got, I got a lot of respect for, uh, for Aaron Taylor Johnson. That's the cast. The action is like a series of five or six set pieces that are all so big and mind blowing. You can't quite quantify them. The third act just goes. The third act is insane forever. Um, so I, I had a great time with this film overall. Definitely a theatrical experience. Uh, again, these aren't, this isn't a review. It's just first thoughts, non-spoilers. Um, I do recommend you see it big and loud, as they say in the, in the cliche verse of the internet. Um, but it's such a good time. It's really inventive. It's unlike anything I've seen before. What it does with chronology is fascinating. It's way more mind bendy than the trailers look. It's kind of like Inception meets Memento meets James Bond and Dark Knight. It's a lot of fucking movie. It's also two and a half hours. So it's a lot of fucking movie. Um, and I really, really, really had a great time. So I'm seeing it again today and I'll be seeing, I'll doing a full spoiler review next week. And I'll warn you guys with the spoilers and all that jazz, but next week expect a more cohesive review from me. Um, and I really had a good time with it. So check out Tenant. Uh, it's not my favorite Nolan film. A lot of people are saying it's their favorite. It's probably like fourth. Uh, I got a lot of love for the dark Knight. I got a lot of love for Batman begins. Um, those are probably my top two. And then Prestige and and Prestige and uh, Inception dance around at three. And then this is four. Yeah. So next week I will rank my Nolan and I will give you guys a full, full review. Jumping back in the Streamlabs because you guys are fantastic. And I'm actually having a hard time keeping up with all of the stuff on the screen, which is very heartwarming, which I very much appreciate. Uh, I saw some people worried it was working or not. So I want to make sure it is because I want to make sure you guys know what is afoot. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Mukbang reviews was the last one I left off with a new guy, dude, a new guy. Thank you so much for the Streamlabs. Um, for those of you, uh, that don't know, uh, Streamlabs is, is, I can see all the text and also there's a dollar sign next to this, which is both perverse and hilarious. I appreciate you. Uh, fans of Deadpool will assume that I like a good dick joke, but I also like a good 69 joke. So thank you very much for the happy birthday from a new guy. I appreciate you. Uh, do what you want to do today, man. Thank you. I do want to do what I want to do today. I actually managed to carve out four days off, including today. 
Um, so I've got today and tomorrow, and then I've got Saturday and Sunday to myself, which is insane. So um, I'm taking some time this week, and I'm really excited. I've got some work to do on Thursday. I've got a lot to do next week. Um, so I will do what I want to do today. And that's going to go right to Tony Hawk, by the way, unless you tell me otherwise. That is going towards Tony Hawk and a movie. So thank you, a new guy. Much, much appreciated. Sincerely. That's so rad of you. Uh, I read Jason Ritchie's. Oh, that's why you were confused if I saw it or not. Yeah, it came before Jason Ritchie's, but Jason's popped up on my phone. Where's the, the Streamlab um, is quicker, but I didn't see it at the time. Uh, PC, happy birthday, Koi. If things were normal, what would you be doing today? Oh, PC, if things were normal, that was a great question. Oh, by the way, I want to turn this dude into a QA and a uh, by the end, so definitely, by all means, this is perfect. Um, PC, what would I be doing today? I'd probably be with a lot of my friends like a lot of friends that like I don't see often birthdays or when I, you know, it's kind of the excuse to get together. Um, weddings, funerals, and birthdays are, are kind of how that works, especially in LA, which is such a big town. Um, usually for my birthday, I have people over and we watch a bunch of movies and drink. Um, I, some people aren't drinkers, some people are. I personally drink um, and I like drinking with movies. I like making drinking rules. So like Top Gun, my go-to is every time there's a call name, you drink. So Iceman, Maverick, Goose, and you're like zero dark 30 in 30 minutes. It's a fantastic drinking game. Uh, Lost Boys, whenever they say Michael or David drink, it's literally one rule, it's just names. They're two names and you're fucking three sheets to the wind in a hurry. Um, so those sort of things, I'm a big fan of that for my birthday. I tend to like go out to eat with friends. I tend to like bring, uh, you know, like, you know, five or six people to, uh, like salsa and beer in the Valley is one of my go-tos. I'm a big fan of salsa and beer. So I'd be bringing friends there. Um, what else have I done? One time I went to Kamikaze when it fell on my birthday and had a giant Nerf war. That was insane. My 30th birthday, my girlfriend at the time threw me the best surprise party I've ever had and like can't be topped, um, where it was like a gala event with a red carpet and there was friends posed as paparazzi taking a bunch of photos because I love photos because my memory's garbage. Um, and there was a, a photo booth set up as the friend set because I love friends. Uh, there was headshots of me from when I was an actor boy in like my early 20s all over the walls. There was a movie theater uh, room instead of a dance floor. It was a, it was a theater screening Fight Club and Deadpool. Uh, back to back. So it was like a six hour party and it played like Fight Club, Deadpool, Deadpool 2. Um, just on, 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 on loop. Uh, and then, cause I don't really dance. So there was movies going on, which was so rad. Uh, there was a, there was two bartenders and uh, it was an open bar, which was insane. And then a cotton candy machine, a pretzel uh, stand and like I am obsessed with cookie dough, so the cake, this was my 30th birthday, the cake was 30 pounds of cookie dough instead of getting a cake. It was literally 30 pounds of cookie dough. So that was the best party I've ever had. It was absolutely insane. Like a hundred of my friends came. Um, my family flew in from Boston and Virginia. Um, my grandparents flew in, my mom, dad, and sister flew in. My little brother couldn't make it, he was working. Um, my little brother couldn't make it from Boston, but my grandparents got to meet like a hundred of my friends. And that was absolutely insane. So my grandparents came out, um, they were there with me till four in the morning. My grandparents were partying till four in the morning. Uh, and then my parents were there and it was awesome. I love my family so much. So that day during the day, I played Spider-Man on PS4 when it came out in 2018. And then, uh, and then that night I had one of the best surprise parties ever. I drank poaching, which is my favorite booze, went to dinner, had a nice Irish meal, had a big stew, and then got to hang out with my friends till 4 a.m. Um, that was the best party ever. Uh, another party I had once was uh, like at this gala ball and um, Grant Morrison came. So I got to hang out with Grant Morrison for my 28th. Yeah, so birthdays mean a lot to me. Uh, I think everyone should have a day they celebrate themselves. I think you should appreciate being alive. I think you should celebrate uh, existence as much as possible. And I'm not a religious man, so basically religious um, holidays don't mean as much to me. I love Christmas because it brings families together and there's a lot of festiveness. But there's always the connotation of like, this is a religious holiday and I'm not religious, so it doesn't, it doesn't ring as true as a birthday. Um, New Year's is a time thing and we invented time. We didn't invent, well, we invented birth because we, you know, do it. But, uh, but like birthdays are the only thing that's like truly yours. You know, it has nothing to do with time or religion, it's yours. So uh, birthdays mean a lot to me. So I would be hanging out with friends and family. I'd be seeing people I love and care about. I would be, uh, I'd be drinking, which I'm doing, which is close. You know, I'm getting this part. Uh, I'd be relaxing as much as possible. I got a run in today, which felt really nice. I ran up to a lake. Um, I'd just be with people I care about and be close to them. And I just miss that. I miss, I miss congregating. I miss seeing others. So great question. I appreciate you. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Wesley Marshall. 
You should watch John David Washington and Black Klansman. John David Washington's and Black Klansman? I did not know that. That's on my very short list. That's in my next 10 movies. I just looked at my next 10. That's very soon. That excites me. I will be telling you what I think of that movie and the John David Washington very soon. Much appreciated. Hell yeah. Uh, did not know he was in it. Uh, Remy's Art. Is that Remy's Art? I'd imagine that's Remy's Art. Uh, I'm curious about your art. I'm going to look you up after. Happy birthday from Remy's Art. Thank you, Remy's Art. I think I've actually, that name looks familiar. I think, I think I've seen your stuff on Instagram. Maybe. I could be wrong. Thank you very much. Either way, Remy's Art. Much, much appreciated. Uh, Mukbang Reviews. I liked one of the Schmodowns where you were running and talking mad-ish. It was epic. Have you ever trained others or had a great trainer? You are amazing. Happy birthday. Thank you again, Mukbang. Uh, I have trained before. In high school, uh, I was certified in some manner in Massachusetts, um, and I had a great time um, helping people that wanted to get in shape get in shape. Um, I had a great time. I know a decent amount about anatomy, and I know a decent amount about nutrition. The nutrition field is ever-evolving. Science is, is science. It's ever-growing. Um, but I, I love personal training, so I used to. Uh, I don't have the time anymore because how many other things uh, I'm doing, but for me personally, I enjoy the, the process. Uh, and that, that hill I was running in, uh, in that promo was no joke. It's like, it's the Hollywood Hills leading up to, um, the, it crests and then goes down to the Hollywood Bowl, but it crests like this insane upright. So I really wanted to capture, and I was legit doing that while, while recording and filming. And uh, yeah, that was such a fun, I, I enjoyed that promo. So I'm glad, I'm glad you dug it as well, Mukbang. Um, but yeah, my recommendation, my, my universal recommendation for training is make sure you love it or you won't do it. Find something you would love at least 20, 30%. You might not love it 100%, but if you love parts of it, you're more likely to do it. It's better to love like 70%, but if you can love 30. And then I try to do 10% more every day. So if I'm running and I'm slow that day, I try to run 10% farther. If I'm feeling fast that day, I'll try to run 10% faster. Eventually you'll plateau, but while I'm training, that's my marker. Um, same with weights. Like I try to lift 10% more either in reps or in weight. And I try to just kind of do that over and over again until I'm beast mode. Uh, currently I'm trying to get down to six to 7% body fat. Uh, I'm trying to get my weight down to the 150s, then I'm gonna bulk back up. Um, obviously, today doesn't count, um, but it's been a really cool training with specific goals in mind. Thanks for the question. Uh, Darth Vader! Darth Vader is one of the only five YouTube pages I subscribe to. I do not follow a lot of people on YouTube. Uh, I follow those two great music reactor kids. Uh, I follow this great musician I just discovered that does loops, this loop daddy. Uh, I follow Darth Vader because he is so wholesome and I love his reviews and his voice is awesome. Uh, Darth Vader is a fantastic person, a fantastic follow. Check out his YouTube page, Darth Vader. Thank you for the happy birthday, Darth Vader. I appreciate you very, very much. Roman Carlyle, happy birthday, Koi. Have you seen the Mandalorian season two trailer? I have. Um, it's rad. I didn't include it as part of the rundown because I thought a breakdown would be, uh, it just dropped and I didn't have time to do a breakdown. So I don't want to like mislead people into like, oh, I'm watching this. Uh, I watched it casually as a fan and I loved it. Um, I think that, you know, the child looks even better than season one. His mobility looks better. It looks really interesting. The escalation of action is fantastic. The fact that we have that many more sets, even though they're filming on one set is fantastic. Um, it is, it is a glorious escalation of the Mandalorian. Um, the score and soundtrack is the same, uh, guy that did Tenant, and I love the sound design on the Mandalorian. It's one of my favorite things. So the escalation looks great. I wish Bill Burr was in it more. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for Mandalorian season two, and I'm really excited to be watching it at Disney Plus since we're all stuck at home. It's the perfect time. It's the perfect opportunity. So yes, very excited. Yes, big ups to, uh, Mandalorian season two, and I enjoyed that trailer. I'll probably talk about it more on next week's. Um, if it's still relevant, if there's not a ton of other news, but yes, very excited for the Mandalorian season two. Thank you, Roman Carlisle. Uh, Jesus. Oh shit. Jesus. Uh, I got my quiet punch last week pre-order. Dude, uh, using my discount code at checkout, trying to get back into shape and get in out of this mess better than I left it. I'm going to try to get back into running again. You have no idea how happy that makes me like to inspire others to, to want to be better is all I want to do. Like whether it's being a better um, athlete or a better nicer person or a better father, a better mother, a better, a better, words are hard, a better uh, son, a better friend. Like I just want people to be better, just a little bit better. So if you want to get in shape, that's amazing. If you want to run, that's amazing. Start with a quarter mile and then the next day do like 
you know, a third of a mile, like start small and just build up and, and it's, it'll take no time. Before you know it, you're running five miles, you feel better than you felt in forever. Um, take your time, don't hurt yourself. The quiet punch has unlimited application in life. There's hundreds of hours of videos. Uh, the company itself is super uh, intuitive and fantastic. Um, there's like training regimen. If you've never boxed before, you can learn boxing fairly quickly. It, it's such a great company and the guy that runs it is super kind and he, and he pays attention and you can ask him questions. Brian Padone is a great dude. Um, you're going to love the thing. Let me know how you like it, Jesus. That makes me so happy. Thank you for that compliment. Thank you for, that's literally all I want to do with my YouTube is try to help people. Uh, and if you want to be better, that's fucking awesome. If you want to train, if you want to run, you want to do shit, that's dope. So congratulations on the quiet punch and thank you for letting me know. And uh, congrats on the fitness journey, man. It's going to be bitching. That's, that's really rad. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay. More news. Then I'm going to jump back in to the stream labs right after. Uh, the DC multiverse is about to be a very different thing with Flashpoint. If you guys follow my audio show or my Collider Heroes stuff or my, my Koi Cubed, which is where you are right now, you know that for a long time I've been saying that the Flash movie is probably going to bring things together instead of tear things apart. Uh, I, I know in the comics the Flashpoint is a way to kind of have a schism to share universes and separate the universes, but it's my opinion that the movie is going to do the opposite. I think it's going to bring a lot of universes that have been disseparate together. Um, I think that it's going to be a great opportunity to clean up continuity in a really inventive way. I think it's going to be a really good opportunity to clean up fan toxicity. Um, if Robert Pattinson, Batman, and Batfleck, and the Batmans of our childhood can all coexist, that's huge. And I think that's what's happening. Obviously, we've got Michael Keaton coming back as Batman, but there's a reason I put Alfred in the image of this show. Alfred, Michael Go was the beginning of the mess of continuity in a positive way. We had the same Alfred in four Batman movies with three different Batmen. Val Kilmer, George Clooney, and Michael Keaton all had the same Alfred, but they were all different Batmen. I think that's going to be addressed in this Flash movie, and I think we're going to be getting a very different universe going forward. Now, there's a quote that's fascinating, and it's from the director of The Flash, which I'm very excited about because I'm a huge fan of this man. Um, it is uh, Muschietti, but it's the producer, sorry. Uh, the producer, uh, Barbara Muschietti, had this to say about The Flash. Quote, well, I want you to go see it, so I'm not going to tell you a lot, but what I will tell you is that it's a ride. It's going to be fun and exciting, and there are a lot of DC characters in it. Flash is the superhero of this film because he's the bridge between all of these characters and timelines. And in a way, it restarts everything and doesn't forget anything. It restarts everything and doesn't forget anything. This is huge. I think we're going to be addressing all of the Supermans, all of the Batmans, all of the, uh, the Snyder-verse, uh, all of the CW-verse, uh, which is the Arrowverse, maybe even the Smallville-verse, all of that could be addressed. They could do what they just did with Crisis in the movie and tie that all in together to the Flash with Flashpoint. It could be a barrage of scenes. It could be a cacophony. Because if Warner Brothers has more money for their movies, they're going to throw hundreds of millions of dollars at their movies. Imagine the people they could get even for a day, just a day, and tie all that in together. Flashpoint could literally be into the Spider-verse for a live action format and it's all canon because of the comic books. That's the best part. It could literally be canon because that's what the comics work, but canon for the movies to clean things up. This is a fantastic opportunity for DC. It's a smart opportunity for DC. I can see the trailer now, just all of these characters popping up and it gives us a clean slate going forward with Wonder Woman, with Shazam, with the movies that are going forward with Aquaman 2. This is fantastic. So Flash, I hope Superman's in it. I hope it's Henry Cavill. I hope we get a lot more of that goodness. And I really, really hope that they have all sorts of fun with Batman and all of the Batverse they can do. Uh, I'm very, very excited. So that is my hope for what DC does with the, the, that fandom announcement. And I could not be more related that that is what they announced. Um, I'm now way more excited for Flash than I've been because that was my theory, but I thought it was a pipe dream. Now my pipe dream might not be so pipey. Very excited. So, yes, yes, yes. Okay, gonna go check in on you guys in the chat. All right. Okay, scrolling up, scrolling way up. 
Uh, thank you for the happy birthdays in general. I see a, a whole bunch of these. It makes me very happy. Uh, Garth, I've been a career for five years. Critical Role fan. I love that all of them do voices for the Avengers game, most notably Travis as Thor and Laura and the Black Widow. Uh, I'm friends with a bunch of those folk, and they are all the nicest people in the world. I got a Burning Man with some of them. Um, the Critter community has always been really rad, and everyone in Critical Role is even cooler than you think. Uh, I've known Taliesin for eight years now. I've known Tally for a really long time. I've known Mercer for like seven. Um, I love those folk. Um, Marisha is a, an angel. Uh, they're fantastic. So uh, I, anytime I hear someone's a critter, it makes me happy because they're, they're very deserving of all that glory. Um, <laughs> so I'm back to the 69. Nice. Uh, thank you again, a new guy for the very, a uh, nice uh, stream lab. Let's see. Let's see. People are saying they're probably going to break their quarantine to go see Tenant. Uh, Garth says Boston Common AMC is showing ten over a dozen times every day. Boston's numbers are better than ours. Wear a mask. Be careful. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I haven't been able to see Denzel and John David at all when I take him, uh, which I take as a good thing. First thing I saw him in was Ballers, and he was a lot of fun. For me, it's his voice more than the sight. Um, I definitely think he looks like his dad, and I think he sounds just like him. But yeah, it is definitely a compliment that he's able to not just be his dad. Uh, let's see. For a Nolan ranking list, you should do it all out of order, a la Dunkirk and Prestige and maybe Tenet. Uh, that'd be really funny if I'm just like, here's a list. I literally just list the movies of Nolan. I'm like, out of context, you'll never know which ones I enjoy. I like this joke. That's a good joke. Uh, let's see. Kamikaze shout out to Garth McMurray. Kamikaze is a store I will be checking out once I can travel over in Somerville, Massachusetts. Back to Jesus with Quiet Punch, which makes me so proud. Uh, apparently he's the lead of Black Klansman. I did not know that. I will be even more excited to check it out. Uh, Aaron, uh, late to the party, but happy birthday. Much appreciated. Ludwig Garnson is the man's name. He did the music for Black Panther. He did the music for Tenet. He's doing music for The Mandalorian. He's a goddamn genius. He's also friends with Childish Gambino and has worked with Childish since because of the internet. Uh, he lived with Childish in the, in the because of the internet house. Uh, I'm a giant fan of Childish Gambino, and as such, I'm a fan of the great Ludwig Gorenson. Uh, Yellow Flash asks, you think EG would be more insane if they had Thor kill Thanos just like in the movie, but when they come back from time traveling toward the end of the film, Kang appears then. Uh, I think they can do all of that. I think they can play with in-game continuity. Um, I think they have a lot of opportunity to really mess with continuity. I think they could bring back uh, Chris Evans if they want. I don't think Chris Evans or, or Downey will be back anytime soon, but they can do a lot with the ones that are available. Um, it's such a great opportunity. Thank you, Elton Arthur, for the uh, Oliver Queen 2.0 love. One Alfred, three Batman is the new two girls, one cup. Google search at your own peril. That is terrifying. I didn't recommend this. Be careful. Uh, Wesley, did you hear that Thor Love and Thunder will be utilizing a bigger version of the volume that they used in The Mandalorian? I did hear that. Um, as a fan of that technology and as a fan of as a, a, a practical at all costs, yes. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder is just bananas like everything they're ramping up to do is absolutely insane so um we're in for such a treat with thor love and thunder and we're in for such a treat now that we're you know having to get creative with making new stuff i think this is going to cause a, a new level of practical um and then you'll have more time for the cgi because movies are going to take longer to make so there's a lot of really cool opportunity here and the volume excites the hell out of me all the bts i've ever seen from the volume is surreal and insane uh, yes, I have heard that, and I want to visit that set so bad, but it's literally illegal right now and very unsafe. Uh, so yes, I did hear that, Wesley. Uh, Joe O'Keefe, happy birthday, Cole. I have some Guinness on me. If you're not a Guinness fan, find some Irish drink or food that makes you happy. Dude, I am a giant Guinness fan, and I'm also a giant fan of most everything uh, I ate in Ireland. I actually, like, ate like a king and lost two pounds in Ireland because the food is healthier. Um, I had Irish breakfast every morning. I had stew or fish and chips or uh, you know, cottage pie or uh, corned beef hash every day. I was elated Irish food is up there with Mexican food is my favorite on the planet and Thai food. I love Thai, Mexican and Irish food the most. Those are my, those are my boys. Uh, so yes, Joe, I will be eating something Irish on your behalf and I will be drinking Guinness because it is amongst the best beer in the world. And I actually really enjoy like all the different ones. Um, like the blonde Guinness is solid, the extra stout is solid. Um, They've done like a really good job diversifying their beer and still being incredible in Guinness. And the Guinness factory was so much fun. Touristy, but fun as hell. I had a great time in Dublin. All right, Muckbang. I think you were a great Caps. Schmodown manager, Caps. Can you update us on your progress or upcoming matches? Hashtag Porky Mercs. I can sneakily let you know 
that, what can I tell you? Um, that there is another match coming for a certain competitor that people thought might be a one and done. That won't be till, it's not gonna be anytime soon, but it's gonna excite people. Um, and I talked to this competitor uh, today, yesterday. Um, there is a third round match that is happening very soon that I am so excited about that I'm losing my mind over. Um, I think the team's tournament is gonna go our way. We're training differently for it than we've trained before, but it's um, it's very specific to corruption, and I think that people are going to be surprised. Um, and I'm loving training all my people. Oh, and there's a thing happening in October that involves the Mercs that I'm really excited about because it involves a Merc that I haven't gotten to work with a lot that I appreciate very much. Those are all my vague teases. There is so much coming for the Mercs. I'm very proud of how we're doing. We have a comfortable lead from fourth to fifth. We're in fourth with a comfy lead. And uh, I'm really proud of my team. And I that that the, the, the comeback we've made is, is how I thought we'd play once we got to play. So thank you very much. I love managing them. I love my Mercs. Uh, I appreciate you mukbang reviews. We are hustling. Uh, Deacon Draco, that is a cool last name. Deacon Draco, Deacon Draco, either way. Deacon Draco, happy birthday, good sir. Glad to see you, glad to see you enjoying your day. I really am, thank you. I'm a little buzzed, I'm real happy. I got a run in, um, I'm doing what I want. I'm gonna get some buffalo chicken and like crazy. Uh, I'm probably gonna jump on Amazon and buy myself. Like I, I don't spend money. I literally put it towards rent. Um, so I don't like do the, the fun with money. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna like get a couple things today, I think to like just honor existing, uh, including Tony Hawk and movies and stuff. So that is that is where these are going and I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Uh, and thank you, Deacon. Uh, Dr. Nitrogen's Musical Empire, one of my favorite names to read and a fantastic human being. Uh, happy birthday, Koi. Sorry, it's been a while, but work has been full. Nice hat, dude. See, I remember you, Dr. Nitrogen. You got a fantastic name. You're a nice person. Much, much, much obliged. Welcome back. Work is a whole thing. I totally understand, and I appreciate your Streamlabs, and welcome back. Hopefully, we can have you as, as often as your schedule allows. Also, guys, we've got like 40 people in the chat for a impromptu birthday stream where I barely got my shit together, and I fucking love you guys. Thank you. Okay. A little bit of news, then I'll go back into the regular chat. Uh, Kevin Feige is somehow involved, peripherally, with the Olivia Wilde Spider-Woman movie. Um, Olivia Wilde is doing press for another project and obviously is going to be asked quite a bit about her Spider-Woman project, and obviously she's working for Marvel, even through Sony, still Marvel. Uh, cannot say very much, so she is talking about working with Katie Silverman, who is also working on the fantastic uh, potential Spider-Woman movie, who worked on the glorious Booksmart with Olivia Wilde, saying, quote, all I can say is that this is by far the most exciting thing that's happened to me because not only do I get to tell a story that, listen to me, trying to avoid Kevin Feige's pellet gun, Kevin Feige name drops and the fear, we are seeing this incredible influx of female directors and storytellers getting to take hold of this genre, this superhero space, and infuse it with their own perspective. Not only do I get to tell a story as a director, but I get to develop the story, and that was what made it so incredible for me. I get to do it with the aforementioned Katie Silberman. She and I love to do these sorts of things together, but our love started with Booksmart. To know that we went from telling a story about female friendship in high school to this other stratosphere is just super exciting. She's literally going to a, a coming-of-age movie to a coming-of-age superhero movie, or maybe a maternal superhero movie, or whatever, but it's just, like that's a giant leap from 20 million to 200 million. You know, like That's a huge... Uh, those numbers are made up, but you can see my point. Um, but Kevin Feige, this to me says Kevin Feige is overseeing the Sony influx a little bit more than he was because he's watching those. Uh, this also sounds to me like she's getting a lot more hands-on control than a lot of directors do developing the story. That's fantastic. Uh, being a writer-director is I, not always the way, but always preferable when you see that kind of investment. Um, this is a really exciting quote for a lot of reasons, and I'm really curious what Kevin Feige has to say about Spider-Woman, what that means going forward for the Sony universe of Marvel characters, what that means for, um, you know, your Morbius, your Venom 2, how much Kevin Feige might have been overseeing any of that, not in a, as direct way as he does the MCU, but, you know, saying you can do this, saying you can't do this, saying this works, say this, this messes with our continuity, uh, and maybe even helping out shaping the Sony universe's continuity. Remember, that Spider-Man deal that fell apart and then got fixed last year, two years ago, Sony had to change things and then Marvel had to change things. This all is a very exciting time. So Kevin Feige mentioned by Olivia Wilde's exciting, even more exciting is, is Olivia being excited to develop the story, go from the beginning, direct and write something. Hell yeah, this is excellent news. Uh, all right, that is the Olivia Wilde, Kevin Feige news. 
Uh, now we've got a little bit of sad movie news. Well, sad for me because I'm a theater guy. Um, they're moving Black Widow off of its November release date, and it looks like Soul might be coming to Disney+. Plus. Now, this will excite a lot of people. Um, it is not my favorite because it will do okay. Um, it'll do okay on streaming because, you know, it's a kid's movie. But Soul looks stunning. I want to see Soul, like, with the scope it's intended to be seen with. So I'm a little bummed. Uh, I'm glad they're not moving Black Widow to streaming. I don't think they should. That's going to be a very expensive loss. Um, but I don't think Black Widow is coming out this year. They just moved Wonder Woman to Christmas. I think it's moving again. And I think that Black Widow is going to follow suit to 2021. I don't think we're getting either Black Widow or Wonder Woman this year. Um, but I do think we'll get Soul this year. Unfortunately, that'll be on Disney+. Plus. I get everyone wanting more content, but I literally am, I'm, I watch stuff for a living and I have at least 20 years of stuff to watch, at least. If I started right now, it would take me 20 years to watch all the shows I've heard are good, all the movies I've heard are good, everything on streaming, it'd take 20 years. So there's plenty of content that isn't released, but the problem is if we keep releasing stuff that's done, the, the Batman's going back into production, Robert Pattinson I hear is fine, um, but that's gonna take another six months. That's going to get moved too. All these movies are going to take longer to finish, so we're not going to have anything to open the theaters with. Uh, theaters are hurting. Tenants not helping as much as they thought it would. Um, surprise, surprise, people don't feel safe. Um, it's really a mess, and it's really scary out there. But Wonder Woman, I'm guessing, will be late spring. I think it'll take a Shazam spot where it, like, kicks off summer but super early. So, like, April. Like, that's not summer, but it's summer. Um, so I, I could see Wonder Woman going there, and then I could see uh, Black Widow being a summer movie and The Eternals being the winter movie like it was going to be, uh, but next year. We'll see. It's all up in the air. It's all chaos. But that is the update on what Disney's doing. They are moving stuff again because of uh, basically the, the fan feedback and the box office feedback we've gotten so far. So time will tell, but that is your update. There are things a-sliding and a-moving. All right. Elton, happy birthday, Koi, and greetings from the UK. Wishing, oh, I already got that one. Apologies, but thank you again for the Oliver Queen. That is always a very fantastic compliment. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Christine, we love you too, Koi, and no way you'd miss a birthday show. Thank you for being here, sincerely. Now there's 50 people in here. That warms my heart. Thank you for spending my birthday with me on the YouTube. Uh, and I also know there's a Schmodown right now, or like there's a, a, a Schmodown show happening right now. So I appreciate you guys being here because I know there's a lot of crossover with my myself and the uh, the Schmo folk. Uh, all right, we got Jason Ritchie. Uh, with Batman Day coming up this weekend, I think we should take a minute to appreciate how many lives were saved because Joe Chill Killer, uh, Joe Chill killed Thomas and Martha Wayne. Jason Ritchie, you're dark, you're fucked up, and I appreciate you. Uh, you're right. At the end of the day, Joe Chill saved thousands of lives by murdering two. I don't support that kind of thought, but here we are. You're not wrong, and it's fucked up, and I appreciate you. Joe Chill is the hero that Gotham needed, but not the one it deserved. <laughs> Let's live in a world where we don't need Joe Chills, uh, but in the meantime, while we have them, to Batman. And to Batman Day this weekend. To Batman Day! Mm. Are you guys driving with Waze uh, using the Batman voice? I, I had to drive for the first time in a week the other day, and then my car broke down. My car broke down? Guys, I gotta tell you, while we're doing a QA and a show, I hope the runtime in this show is, isn't a bother to anybody. Um, my car, I was on the highway, and my uh, thermometer light turned on orange, and I was like, ooh. And then uh, I drove a little bit more, and it turned red, and I was like, fuck, I gotta pull over. But I was two miles from my exit, and it was safer to get off the exit. So my car starts overheating and I managed to get up, like off the off ramp, like into the off ramp. Um, but then once I was up, my car completely died, started smoking. And then I was on the off ramp, cars honking behind me. They're trying to go around. I then got out and then used all of the adrenaline like I had and all of the cardio. Luckily I've been training and I pushed my car up and across seven lanes of traffic. There was four lanes coming at me, it was three in a turn lane, and then three lanes on the other side and pushed it into a bus, uh, like where buses pull into, and like almost got clipped so many times. The adrenaline was crazy. Um, my car's in the shop right now. Happy birthday. Um, but like the appreciation I have for life, seeing cars whiz by me, 
I hope my car is fine. I told them not to call me today. They started looking at it yesterday and they like were reluctant. And I was like, please just don't give me bad news tomorrow. It's my birthday. They're gonna call. I'm gonna deal with that tomorrow. Tomorrow I deal with my car, but I'm alive right now. And I pushed my car across seven lanes of traffic and didn't get clipped. Uh, and that was two days ago. So to not die and right around my birthday and to uh, hopefully my car being not as bad as I fear, maybe it's just some hoses, you know, we'll see. We'll see what's up tomorrow. But it was a really intense week. The first time I'd driven in a week and uh, you know, life happens. There's so many variables in life. All we can do is appreciate for what we get. All right. Ian also would not miss a B-Day show. Hell yeah. A new guy repping the chat. Big T Moore, happy birthday, dude. All the best in the UK. A lot of UK love in here. That makes me real, real happy. All right. Uh, should we get a Batgirl series? Seems like a CW show. They've got Batwoman. I doubt they'll do something that similar. Uh, I think it would confuse people, and I think Batwoman is going to have a really different flavor when it comes back. Time will tell, but I think they need to focus on getting people to that show uh, before they add another one personally. Uh, Doctor Doom in the MCU, Green Arrow played by Koi Jandro, or Charlie Han, Mr. Terrific, and Detective Chimp in the DCEU, please. I would play Oliver Queen in a heartbeat. I would call Steven, I would say, hey, give me some advice. And then I would train the next two years, and then I would take acting classes from every one of my friends that takes good acting classes, and I would master it. Uh, yes, I would not fail this city, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I appreciate all the Oliver Queen love today. Also, I want Mr. Terrific and Detective Chimp so badly in the DCEU, and I think they're coming sooner than we think. I think they'll be, I think we'll see one of them, if not both of them, in the next three years. I think there's something happening that means they're coming. Uh, Kevin Smith did do me proud of Chris, against Chris Jericho. He did, man. That was such an incredible match. I'm so, so proud of him, and that was so much fun. That, that was, like, even as a fan of the Schmodown, that was so much fun to be a part of and to witness and just to be, like, the hype was so real. Uh, Jeff Lee, what up, man? Uh, hey, Coy, hope you're having a great birthday, dude. I got you a gift in the mail. Then you're gonna be pretty stoked. Jeff Lee, for the record, is a fantastic human being. Uh, Jeff Lee's a patron. Jeff Lee is a, a great papa, and uh, and he's just a good dude. I, I really enjoy our conversations, and uh, he's sending me something rad for my birthday. And thank you, Jeff, man. I got a lot of love for you, man. Uh, let's see. Everyone is, uh, there is now a movement. There is now a Koi for Oliver Queen movement happening, which I'm very excited about. Uh, yes, backstage is what's, uh, what's going on over in the Schmodown channel right now. So I appreciate you guys being here because I know that's a, I know that's a good show. Mukbang! I just think you're a great person, but can you explain why Deadpool or Spider-Man are the best? I'm Punisher Wolverine guy, but I love your comprehensive knowledge of comics. So... Comic book characters, I think, are like dogs and cats and that they find you. I think the character that you're supposed to identify with finds you. Um, so if you're a Punisher Wolverine guy, it seems to me you like um, a more aggressive form of vigilantism. You like a little more hard edge and you might like, you know, the, the 80s action movie and the, the take all, you know, that kind of that kind of world. And that's that doesn't make your character any less or more than mine. I like humor as a defense mechanism um, because I use optimism as a defense mechanism. I, um, the world sucks uh, often, but if you can find the positive in it, you can help other people get through the world. Um, there's been so much wrong this year. Like I, my world's fallen apart eight ways from Sunday this year and I've soldiered on and I've found the positive in it and I've let that part show instead of the dark part show. Um, so I use optimism in the same defensive way I think Deadpool uses humor to keep people at a distance and also like get through his own disastrous life. And as Spider-Man uses it to not freak out fighting bad guys because he's always in over his head as the underdog. So I think the hero that finds you is the one you identify most with. I don't think there is a best superhero. I don't think there is a lesser house that's why i hate this marvel dc thing like both are fucking great all of them are great image is great idw is great dark horse is great boom is great um they're all great because they all have characters that reflect the reader so maybe you're someone that grew up catholic that has guilt and wants to use that in a specific way you might like daredevil maybe you're someone that feels like they can't be touched and you feel like there's an uh you know you're you're introverted and reclusive and you might identify with rogue maybe you're someone that wants more power but doesn't know how to wield it and has always felt trapped and wants to be uh free and, and fly above and that could be storm or superman like there's there's always a reason you like the character and i find it's usually the undercurrent of the character's choices so deadpool to me is my my quote that started my hosting career 
You either die as Spider-Man or you live long enough to see yourself become a Deadpool. Spider-Man is a brilliant character, but he's always good. I think Deadpool is what happens when Spider-Man breaks. He kills people. He, you know, he, he's a dick, uh, but he's got a great heart. He's just, it's under a lot of other stuff. I feel like I'm always fighting not to break and become a Deadpool because I, I, I like a good dick joke and I like a good, I like humor that isn't appropriate for the world, uh, this current world. And I, I keep that shit to myself a lot because I don't want to offend people, but I like find, I find certain offensive things funny like Deadpool does. So I feel like I, I identify with him, but I definitely identify with power and responsibility. I definitely feel like I identify with um, doing right even when it's insurmountable odds. I feel like the Amazing Spider-Man 33 cover is how I... Sorry, I had a call and I'm on my phone. Uh, so I feel like there's always merit in... Um, finding out what the undercurrent of your character is, and then reflecting that into why you like them so you'll appreciate them even more. So I don't think there are um, best characters. I think there are characters that reflect you and you reflect them. We're all mirrors for the fandom we appreciate. So I think that answers your question. And I love Wolverine and Punisher. So for what it's worth, that is, that is my take. Mr. Mukbang Reviews. Uh, all right, happy birthday from Kat Van D Kate Van D. Thank you, Kate. Very much appreciated. Uh, let's see. Joseph Ashley, I don't think that Black Widow will end up there. That is my fear, but I don't think it will because uh, it's a very expensive movie. Um, cheers to Kate. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Dr. Nitrogen Blimey. Excellent use of Blimey, good sir. Excellent use of Blimey. Um, mm -hmm. Garth, I agree. Joe Schill as a hero is kind of the plot of Unbreakable. I agree. That is that flavor, and that is very M. Night. Koi for Queen! Uh, Garth is a Captain America guy. See? there's It's all in the flavor. It's all in, like, your upbringing. It's all in how you see the world. It's all in... There's so many things. Dynamite comics are also, uh, you know, have things. I like the boys a lot. Dynamite has, uh, has merit. Uh, Batman. Dr. Nitrogen is a Batman person. Do it, dog! I agree, Catherine. Do it, Doug. Uh, let's see. Dr. Nitrogen is cracking open an ale to cheers. Very much appreciated. Uh, I never read Doomed. My older brother was super into it. I saw bits of the Lynch version. Um, I must kill him, LOL, but never understood the hype, but this new Dune trailer has me hyped, says Yellow Flash. Um, I actually am not much of a Dune head, but I know the, the lore is big and I'm very excited for it, but I'm very casually excited for it. It's not my world, but the movie is why I'm excited, not, not the book necessarily. The cast is way too sexy. Denise, my, one of my favorite directors working right now. Um, there's way too much goodness to, um, not be hype, even not knowing the fandom that well. Uh, Melbourne Picture House. Happy birthday, dude. Currently reading Saga. Thanks to your recommendation. Hell yeah, Melbourne Picture House, reppin'. Good man, I appreciate you. Uh, all right, Ian, I'm a Spidey guy, mostly because my parents bought me a, spec spider, a Spectacular Spider-Man 225 at a grocery store. I learned to read cursive due to MJ's thought caption. Still got it in very poor condition. Ian, that's an amazing story. Holy shit, I love that. Um, yeah, that's dope. You learned to read cursive because of Mary Jane. That is so rad. Hell yeah. Um, and Spectacular Spider-Man 225 is a great first book. Into that, much love. Thank you for sharing. Okay, last bit of news before we go into the uh, crazy comic book pull list and wrap the show up at a little over an hour. And then I gotta call back a few people that just called. Uh, again, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for spending my birthday with me. Thank you to the Koi Pond. Uh, a Mississippi mud in your honor is happening and I very much appreciate you. Um, after this, Buffalo Wings in your honor. And I, I very much appreciate all of you. Uh, much love to the Koi Pond. Okay, Venus has biomarkers that could indicate life. Um, this is a very rudimentary. It's just like the beginnings of the science. We have way more to dive into. We have way more to analyze. Um, but there is potential of a form of life on Venus. This is insane. I'm not saying it's the UFOs that we have acknowledged by the government this year. I'm not saying it's intelligent life, but Venus has the potential for life. And it's really cool as our science develops that all the things that we were literally told like weren't possible as kids are happening. In the 50s, it was like, you know, little green men. And then in the 60s and 70s, there was all like the American Ultra and the spy stuff and all these things that are like, turning out to be true, which is fucking crazy. So uh, I think it's really cool that there is potentially life on Venus, even in any form and holy shit. 
Uh, this year has been insane, and of course this is the year we figure out there might be life on Venus. I hope we get more details in the next five years. I think in our lifetime we'll see proof of life in a more intelligent way, and that's so fucking crazy. So uh, I'm very excited, and I just wanted to share with you guys, there might be life on Venus. I just had to, I had to say it out loud because I never thought there'd be something I'd put in a new show. Venus might have life on it. That is so dope. Okay, I'm gonna quickly check the, uh, the Streamlabs again real quick, and then I'm gonna read you guys some comic pull lists. Actually, let me jump in the chat real quick before I read uh, comic stuff, because not everybody's here for comics. All right. Uh, on the spot, Marciano or Ward, just for fun. Jesus Christ. Ward, Mickey Ward. I gotta go Mickey Ward, he's my boy. Uh, I know him. Um, I think that Marciano's got an incredible skill set. I think that he's an incredible boxer, but I think nothing competes with Mickey Ward's heart. Nothing competes with the, the, he's the, he's the champion of getting endurance. Like he, he's such a, he's got the heart of a fighter in such a way. So I, I'm giving it to Ward. I got a personal bias. Uh, he's Irish. Mickey Ward is from my hometown. I got to go Ward. Uh, even if that's just, just, just bias. Uh, Wesley Marshall, I don't get into the comic skate stuff, uh, only because, um, I don't like toxicity in fandom, and it's clearly got a giant, giant that. I don't talk about Star Wars because I think a lot of the, the Star Wars mess has, has ruined uh, what the Star Wars credo was, uh, and I think that, that Comics Gate is, is an easy way to get people to not love comic books, so I just don't, don't get into it. Um, it's not... It sucks that people are full of hate, and it sucks that people are trying to sabotage something as amazing as, as the medium of comic books, but... Um, Fuck them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so not, not my shit. Uh, so I agree with you is what I'm saying. I agree, not my shit. Uh, let's see, this is why I like superheroes. One of the reasons they're so relatable is we can be battling personal demons. Iron Man 128, the cover speaks volumes. Totally agree, Jesus. Um, Demon in the Bottle is a goddamn genius arc and a brilliant storyline, and it does speak volumes. And we're all fighting our own shit, be it, um, you know, uh, alcoholism or or you know, the loss of a loved one or our own power or any of those things. Comic books are incredible. So I totally, totally agree with you. Uh, speaking of comic books, fantastic tangent alley-oop. I appreciate you. Uh, my favorite comic books from last week, the week of September 9th, were Captain Marvel 21, a fantastic continuation of this new fish out of water storyline that I'm really loving. Harley Quinn, black and white and red number 11. That digital title is banging. I am loving this digital book. Uh, Joker, Harley, Criminal Sanity number five, long delayed because of quarantine. Cami Garcia doing the work. Much love for that book. Magnificent Ms. Marvel number 14, the outlawed storyline really kicks off. If you're playing the Marvel Avengers game, highly recommend you check out Magnificent Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel is a beautiful character that mirrors the Silver Age Spider-Man stuff. She's fighting for her hometown. She's dealing with boy drama. She's, uh, you know, a girl over her head. It's very Silver Age Spider-Man. It's really good. And I've learned more about the Muslim religion through comic books than I ever learned um, in our xenophobic country. So it's really cool to learn from comic books about the actual world. And I love her relationship with her family. So Magnificent Miss Marvel, highly recommended. Is issue 14 is one of my books of last week. Marauders number 12, Hox Pox, post Hox Pox. A lot of the books have kind of like wavered for me. Marauders has not. Kate Pride is a fantastic lead character. Much love for that book. Uh, the Resistance number five is about a pandemic. It's about a virus. It's about superheroes. It's like The Boys Meets 2020. Um, it's an indie book from AWA, a comic company I didn't know about until this book, written by J. Michael Straczynski, drawn by Mike Diodato, and it's about viruses and superheroes. Check it out. Um, Something is Killing the Children, number 10. I talk about this book often. James Tinney and the Fourth, writing the hell out of a noir murder mystery book with kids. It's fucked up. It's intense. It's fantastic. Uh, next up, Superman number 25. Brian Michael Bendis, very hit or miss on uh, people liking his Superman or not. This issue is fantastic for me. Uh, new villain is introduced. Great morality play. Lana Lang's in it. I'm a big Lana Lang fan because I had the biggest crush in Kristen Kruick. Um, it's just a fun time, and Bendis writes really fun dialogue. And it's an anniversary issue with 25, so it's a little beefier. Uh, next up, Wonder Woman 762. Three issues into a new story arc, new creative team. Mariko Tamaki is writing Wonder Woman like crazy. 759 might as well be an issue number one. This is a Max Lord story. To me, this is them promoting the Wonder Woman movie that would have been out right now. Um, it's a really good time. Highly recommend this arc. You could literally start at 759 and read 760, 761, now 762. 
Really good run of Wonder Woman. Finally, my other, my last favorite book from last week is X Force number twelve, the darkest, bloodiest, R-ratedest of all of the X-Men books. Post Hox Box X Force lives up to its name. Um, I highly recommend this book if you like the darker side. Mukbang reviews. Mukbang. If you want to read some X-Men, check out X Force. This is your Wolverine Punisher flavor. This is your that style of, of villain. So highly recommend X Force number twelve, which dropped last week. And then my final things for this week are going to be recommending you comics that drop tomorrow, the 16th of September. September 16th books I recommend are Amazing Spider-Man Sins of Norman Osborn. I think this is going to try into that tie into that mystery that's going on with that new villain and it's very Silver Age in its flavor. Highly recommend you check out Sins of Norman Osborn. Uh, Batman number 99 continues this insane arc of war of the joker it is intense it is glorious it is madness highly recommend this batman run uh also this week is detective comics we'll get to that though captain america number 23 that's uh lower on my poll but i'm still gonna check it out i always check out cat books catwoman 25 ties into the joker war storyline detective comics 1027 is an anniversary issue of the beginning of detective comics of the beginning of dc it is a graphic novel for the price of an overpriced not overpriced an, uh, a What's it, what's it called when you inflate the price because it's big? Anyway, it's a $10 book, but it's a full-ass graphic novel, and it looks bitchin'. I haven't read it yet. It drops today. Detective Comics 1027 is one of the books I'm most looking forward to for this week's comics. Uh, Excalibur number 12. I have not been loving Excalibur as much, but I keep hoping it has a big twist or turn or something that gets me in, but I'm reading all the Hawkspox stuff. Giant Size X-Men Storm is one of my three pulls for the week. Giant Size X-Men books have all been fantastic, and I'm a huge Storm fan, so I'm hoping... This is supposed to kick off her entire giant storm storyline stuff that's coming. I really think this book's going to be important. Highly recommend you check this one out. Giant size X-Men Storm tomorrow. Hellions number four. Again, all the Hawks Pox stuff. This is a good book. I'm, I'm enjoying Hellions. Immortal Hulk has two books this week. Zero and 37. There are uh, two books coming out that are Immortal Hulk based. I don't know what Zero is. I assume it's some origin stuff. We will see. And then uh, 37 continues the story. It's Al Ewing. It's Tony, uh, Tony Bennett. No, that's the, that's the singer. Joe Bennett uh, on art. It's a glorious book. It's a horror book. It's fucked up. It's great. Uh, Iron Man has a new number one this week. I know nothing about it, but it's an Iron Man number one. Uh, Joker Killer Smile is getting its graphic novel this week. The Joker Killer Smile miniseries was fantastic. It's getting collected into a graphic novel that drops tomorrow. Seven Secrets number two. Issue number one sold out three printings. Tom Taylor is one of my favorite writers. He's a genius. Seven Secrets is dropping. It's issue number two tomorrow. Highly recommend you pick it up. Uh, and then my number two book of the week, Stillwater number one, Chip Zdarsky, the goddamn genius that is Chip Zdarsky, has a new indie book over at Image. I have never, never missed a Chip Zdarsky book, and I've never not enjoyed the journey. It's an Image book. It's Chip Zdarsky. It's Stillwater number one. It's tomorrow. My number three book of the week, so if you're only buying three books, I recommend Stillwater number one, Giant Size X-Men Storm, and then this book, Thor number seven. Guys, Thor by Donny Cates, Thor by Nick Klein is amongst the best Thor of all time. Maybe my favorite run ever. Issue number seven drops tomorrow. Feels like a birthday gift. I'm very excited for that book and continuing that journey. X-Men number 12, the incredible post Hawkspox run of Jonathan Hickman. I really like this title. Some of the spinoffs aren't for me. This title is. And finally, X-Men Marvel's Snapshots drops tomorrow as well. So lots and lots of comics to read. Those are all the ones I'm picking up and the ones that I enjoyed from last week. I kicked off with. Hopefully some of those tickle your fancy. Uh, Mukbang also says, did I ever read New Mutants or Power Pack? Thoughts on young superheroes are appreciated. Happy birthday. Um, I read New Mutants, uh, the, the Sienkiewicz stuff. Um, I really liked it, but I was too young to realize the scope of it until I reread it before the movie. Uh, I think the New Mutant stuff is genius. It's so good. Um, I really, really like that. I was never a Power Pack guy, though. Uh, I like Young Avengers. I like New Mutants. But Power Pack wasn't... I think I was too old for how young it was. Not my cup of tea. So, personally, uh, New Mutants and Young Avengers are my young teens especially Alan, Alan Heinberg's New Mutants. I really think that hit a really cool cultural zeitgeist. It really brought in some fascinating characters that are gonna stand the test of time. It's gonna be the next wave of what the Marvel Universe becomes. There's a lot of really cool stuff with Young Avengers. And then of course, New Mutants is, is the, the 80s, early 90s cultural touchstone of comic books. So 
I'm not much on Power Pack, but those other two are near and dear to my heart. So thank you again, Mukbang Reviews. Uh, all right, I'm gonna quickly jump into the chat and then I'm gonna boogie. Thank you to all of you that have shared this birthday uh, stream with me. I've been really enjoying this. I'm glad I did this today. Um, Eric Patterson, thank you for the happy birthday. Much appreciated. Uh, Scott Welsh, Koi, wishing the happiest of birthdays. Enjoy your quarantine birthday as much as you can. And thank you for all the entertainment you bring all of us. I try, man, and I appreciate you. And cheers. Uh, Guy Etchell's Oil Your Door. I don't know how, but I appreciate it. Uh, I, I appreciate your sass. I don't know how. And I just moved in here. You'd think they'd oil doors. I don't even know if that's a thing. Is that a thing you ask landlords? Like, hey, oil my fucking door. Um, that's what it sounds like when people enter my home, which is why I gotta go, because I got a birthday. All COVID tested, negative. People went in honor of my birthday to make sure it was safe. Please be careful and responsible out there. Wear masks if people you don't know. Catherine Smith, WD-40. I'm the least handy person you know. I talk about comic books, but maybe I'll go to Home Depot and I'll get some WD-40 and I'll just spray it all over my door and hopefully someone will know how to help me clean that up because it won't go well. Um, yeah, I'm bad at that stuff. I'm the, I'm the worst guy guy for that shit. I work out, I can fight a little bit, I like alcohol, but I can't do hands-on shit to save my life. So I'm only so much guy's guy. WD-40 is about the line. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, Weston Iro, happy Koi Day, dude. Much appreciated. Uh, <laughs> Catherine Smith is the, the WD-40 note, and someone cracking a beer with Koi is the sound of my door. Correct. Uh, Wesley, I'm about 40 issues away from finishing the Jason Aaron run. Then I'll be reading Donny Cates' run of Marvel books up to his Thor and Venom. Wesley, you're going on an amazing journey. Uh, you're going on a fantastic journey. I'm, in fact, very jealous of your journey because Donny Cates' Thor is about to change you as a human and as a comic reader. Prepare. Strap in. Jason Aaron's run is an incredible Thor run. Donny Cates' Thor run is a life-changing journey, good sir. You're going to remember it the rest of your life. It's like the first time you watch Fight Club. You're like, that's different. The first time you watch The Matrix, I'm a new man. Donny Cates' Thor is that good. Strap the fuck in. Okay, uh, almost caught up with everybody. Scott Welsh, man, it's almost October. Keep your house a haunted one. Touche, Weston. Touche. That is a haunted house door. I'm on brand. Dr. Nitrogen, here's a little more money towards the car repair. Oh, thanks, dude. That's very sweet. Uh, fingers crossed it's a repair. Yes, fingers very, 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 very crossed. No one of your decent character deserves that shitty right before their birthday. It was not the way I wanted to start a birthday week. And I really, I got uh, emotional in the angry sense, a little pouty, and then I immediately decided that I couldn't let it ruin my time. I was angry, and then I was like, nah, fuck, fuck getting angry. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a be happy. So I, um, I reframed it. Like, I didn't get hit by a car, and I reframed it to, um, you know, I, I got where I needed to go, and I had someone kind enough, and a friend that I'm close enough with that would, well, like, could rescue me. Like, it all made me appreciate shit more. It was a very, it was a weird, like, Buddhist moment of like, ah, now I see the appreciation. So it did suck, and I appreciate you, and I gotta fix that shit, and I'm hoping it's a fix, not a total, and it will be, because I'm a will it. I'm a will it to be a fix. So thank you very much, Dr. Nitrogen, towards the, towards the fix the car fund. Uh, Maddie Gunner said, Donny Cates might be my goat. Dr. Nitrogen, I had to add in the asterisks so YouTube wouldn't let me send the message with the unedited version. I'll swear for YouTube, don't you worry. I'll say all the fuck shits, ass, cunts, whatever you need. Uh, let's see, let's see. My birthday is almost here, turning 22 in a month, so excited. Hey, Zeus! 22 is a good time because you're done with the pressure of stupid drinking and you can be a grown ass man and drink casually. 21, I made some choices. 22, I was like, whoa, 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 let's slow the fuck down. Uh, happy birthday in a month, hey, hey Zeus. Uh, October's a great time. And uh, I hope you have a great 22nd birthday and I appreciate you very, very much. And I am healthy, Dr. Nitrogen, that is very true. All right, guys, I caught up on the live chat. I'm gonna refresh the stream lab one last time so I don't make the mistake of missing anybody because y'all are very impossibly sweet. And uh, this has been a fantastic way to spend the birthday. Um, Ash, hey, Koi, happy birthday. I haven't been able to donate for a while but just wanted to say thank you for being you. Thank you for being you. Uh, I, I literally, any, anything in here is jarring to me because I, I just forgot. There's so much shit in the world and you guys legitimately, the Koi Pond reminds me that the world's not garbage. Uh, turn on any news channel, turn on any Twitter page for long enough, click any fucking hashtag and you will doubt mankind. But get in the Koi Pond and look at this. Like I don't have a fucking moderator because you guys are so great. That's you. So thank you very fucking much. That was a great way to end the show. 
Uh, you guys keep me going. And if people ask how I'm so energetic and how I'm so positive, it's because I choose to find the positive and because the people that I, I commit to time with reflect that back to me. Um, and that's you guys. So thank you, Koi Pond. Thank you very much. Uh, Remy's Art, thank you for sharing my birthday. I really appreciate it. I, I love that you have a martini symbol in your text. You have to teach me how to do that. I've got science and magic happening. Uh, okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I could do this for like nine hours, and then I wouldn't do anything else. And as fun as that would be, I got to go. So thank you all very much. Thank you for spending uh, my birthday with me. Uh, me and Wade, I got some shenanigans to get into. You are all amazing, amazing people. Hopefully you enjoyed the dashes of news mixed in with the chaos of me drinking and doing a Q&A. Uh, thank you to each and every person that jumped in the super chat, each and every person that threw in a stream lab, each and every person that threw in a comment or a question, anyone that's just fucking here, thank you very, very much. Uh, I've been on this planet for 32 years and the one thing I've learned is that uh, you gotta appreciate every minute because we only get so many of them. So do something for you today and do something um, to make you appreciate something you might not have appreciated before because aging is scary and sucks, but we gotta do it. Uh, thank you for all the happy birthday love. I will see you guys next week for a much less chaotic show that's planned with order and a little less chaos, maybe some drinking, who fucking knows? I will see you guys next week. I love you very much. Thank you for being here and thank you as ever to comic books for existing. Bye guys.